Hey everyone, this is Bruce from Kraken Gypsies, and today we'll be looking at doing the weekly Avengers here in a sec. Let me switch this over real quick. Uh, we are going to swap champions as well, but before we do that, we're going to go and look at what we have to deal with. So we have the 1.5 star Avenger. This is a Starlight Portal, of course. They have the special rolls, Natural Magic. All cards cost two less. And so what we might be able to utilize here is Annie. And the reason why I say that is because she costs one. You know, we can just use Annie and we can just roll over this with free Annie and Gale Force. Alternatively, there's a lot of other options that you have available to you. I don't really see anything that comes to mind that would be like detrimental to their cost aside from maybe buy where you know you have to play a certain amount of cards first um but besides that yeah i think that's what we're going to go with here um diana would also be fantastic same reason why annie would be and yeah okay well we're going to dive into it with annie um right now we are running the gale force guardian zorb tech <laughs> and here we go. We're gonna go go into it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. All right. So we have our first power here. Um, we're gonna go for sorcery for sure. It's really good for any in general. I mean, we get guile for free and stuff. And. Our first encounter is a sparring student with practice motions. If you've watched our other videos before or played this before, um, I don't think I really have to explain this at this point uh, since I've been over it so many times, to be honest. Uh, but when a unit summon, give its weakest ally 1-1 one, one this round. That's okay. It just means it's like the power is going to be spread out unless they only have one unit but that wouldn't work because it's based on summoning so overall they're like the power and health of their units are going to be pretty balanced um anyways so we are going to replace pretty much everything in our hand except for death sand all right and we're going to keep this like this And we do get our mana back. Annie's going to be free. Most of our cards are going to be free. So it'll be a fun time. Alright, so we're just going to immediately drop down Guile here. And not deal with the Green Blade Elder. Interesting. So their cards are zero cost too. Oh. Well. I can wait a second before I drop down Death Sand. I'll just drop down Annie for now. Okay, well that actually made things a little bit more complicated for me. Um, we are going to use deaths, both of our Death Sand. Take those out, at least for now. And that gives us some more stats because we summon more units since that is summoning beacon. Damn. You have to be careful with these highwaymen. I'm, like... I wasn't expecting it, so... Um... We could technically block with Annie. You wanna play? Yeah, because she's going to go back into our hand anyways, thanks to Gale Force. I just need to make sure she doesn't, you know, get popped, basically. We'll drop down the Legion Sepultor. We're probably just going to clear our hand here, to be honest. What good power if you're not going to use it? <laughs> yeah, we'll end around there. Okay, it's now our attack turn. We're going to drop down Annie first before we drop down the House Spider. And we do have to be careful because we only have 11 cards left to their 18. So it's very possible for us to run out of cards here. Uh, we will be using Guile on their Sparring Student. And they have no cards left in hand, so I'm free to do whatever I want on this attack turn, frankly. Uh, we're going to put Heavy Blight Fragment on Annie as well. And this is going to actually help... In number of ways which will be cool now uh, we're just going to commit this attack like this for now and we'll see how things go 
So as you see, any spell will deal two, and since we have Overwhelm on her, she's going to deal two to the Nexus. And that's kind of why I did this like that. And we're going to attack with everyone, and that's definitely going to be enough. I mean, we have one Legion Saboteur. Um, they're going to be dealing three to the Nexus regardless, on top of everything else that's going on, so we'll be good to go. Alright, that should be the, the first encounter for you guys. Alright, we're going to finish it there. I hope you guys had a great weekly vault. That would be today, by the time I'm recording this. Um, Lord Broadmaid's honestly really good for Annie. Thanks to all this that uh, goes on wherever you play him, basically. Um, he'll he'll do deal two to an enemy, and my fast spells and slow spells and skills um, kills off stunned or damaged enemies. So it works really works really well with Annie. And we have a support champion here. So we have three options. We have Senna, which would provide us more spells. We have Echo, which will provide us with a little bit of a beefier unit. But uh, we get Predict. Oh, sorry about that. We get Predict. Uh, we might get Chrono Break. It's whatever. Uh, we could also go for Victor, and Guile is a created card, and she has some other created cards, so Victor is not the worst option. Um, we can also reroll as well, which I think we'll do. I want to see what else we can use. Uh, we could go for Seraphine here. This is actually kind of funny for her to have Radiant Plate Armor. And the reason why I say that is because otherwise she'd be free. So it's kind of, in a sense, unfortunate that she has that, but this would actually be really good since everything costs two less. We'll be able to level her up very fast. Um, we have the choice between the Silent Shadow Seer, Special Node, the Shop, and the Item Chest. Currently, with how things are, I'm going to try to get the Silent Shadow Seer, actually, so we're going to have to go up against the Fate Blade Twirler. They have the same powers everywhere else. On the round start, they stun the weakest unit, thanks to Flash of Steel. All right, we are going to replace the Mana Soul Student and the cap Captive Greyback, and we're going to keep the rest of our hand. I like being able to play things turn one. So since we have Guardian's Orb, Gale Force Annie, she's going to be the first card that we play here. Alternatively, I could look to Guile immediately, but I think it would be a waste. They're already down to two cards as well, which is neat to think about. We'll drop down the House Spider here, and this gives us cards to block with. Think you're fast. Cute. Okay. And now, we're going to use Death Sand to take out the Fade Blade Twirler. And this is also going to put some damage in on their Nexus and summon a unit for us. Um, they go for another attack here. We're going to block with the House Spider, and we are going to block with the Spider Link. We're going to save our Academic, since it can be buffed up and scale harder or faster. Uh, we'll drop down the Legion Saboteur, and probably the rest of our hand, to be honest. Okay. Alright, so, since it grows an ally to 5 power this round, we can actually just save this. It's not fleeting, so it's fine. Alright, we dropped down Annie, just like before. So, we're going to use Gaio here on this full squirrel. It is our attack turn, so we'll be able to make a lot out of this. Make the most out of this, really. Uh, and we're going to use Legionary Charge. And we are going to grow Annie to 5 power here. 
And we're gonna attack with her as well. And this should be enough in total to finish it off. But we'll see what they do after this. So we stunned their one unit before we went for the attack. And that's just gonna optimize everything. Basically. If I wanted to optimize things further, I'd drop down the Prefect. But they don't have anything to block her with, so I can't utilize the Rally Banner on her. But, either way, we still finished it pretty well. Pretty fast. Okay, now, this is actually a complicated choice for us to set, like, all these choices are good, in their own right. If I use Drum Solo, this is actually going to be kind of funny. So if I use Drum Solo, everything's free. Like, almost everything in my deck is free. If I use the Plunder effect on it, the card itself is free. So it's just a free draw with free cost reduction if I have Flow going for me. Um, on the other side of things, we have the Captive Greyback with higher stats, and with it having Shadow Totem, it's going to deal 6 damage in total if it wasn't blocked instead of 2. Actually, it's more than that, but like just with the power alone, it would be 6, because it's 3 power and 3 power. Um, the Dragon Tooth on the Trifarian Glory Seeker is probably... Not what I'm looking for, and the reason why I say that is because it only has one health. You know, so it's... Unless I get quick attack for it, it's not the best option. It's actually the worst out of these. Um, so yeah. The attack skill from the Captive Greyback alone, like with it being duplicated, would hit for 6. On top of it already hitting for... Uh, yeah, it would hit for 10 in total. Without the Savage Shield. With the Savage Shield, it'll hit for 12. But I still think Drum Solo is better. I think it is a neat card. And we're going to check out the Silent Shadows here. I'm not that familiar with this special node, so we'll see what happens. We pay health to get an item to a card. Like, add an item to a card in our deck. We can add more items, but the price will go up. So, our choice is Affirmio on everything. Uh, I don't really need it. So, unfortunately, now we know. We don't really care to go for the Silent Shadows here. And up next, we are forced to go up against the Herald of the Spring. They have the Power Support Group, which is their normal power, I think. Uh, when one of their units is supported, it's granted 1-1. One, one. We're going to go after it. We'll see how it goes. Okay, just like before, we'll replace the Mana Soul Student and the Captive Greyback, and we're cool with this. Uh, we could have replaced Disintegrate too, but it might come in handy. Unfortunately for us, we didn't draw any off the bat. So, we'll, we'll have to see what happens here. Um, there's no way of us dealing with the elusive unit just yet, so we're going to have to drop Guile on her immediately. Damn. Alright, well, they nopified it. That's okay. Nothing I can do about that. Okay, so we're gonna drop down a house spider here then instead. And we're just gonna shadow block. Basically. I mean, well, it's not really a shadow block. We're sacrificing our spiderling. And we're gonna drop down our seraphine as well. Well, that would have been useful earlier. That's okay. Uh, we'll drop down our other house spider here too. And we'll end the round there. Alright, so... We'll drop down the Prefect, and we'll eventually drop down the Man of Soul student as well. As you can see, they're continuing to make things elusive, which is going to give us more grief. But I think we'll be able to control the pace of this battle just fine regardless. We're going to use Guile here. And we're going to stun the Fey Guide. That way the only thing that they have to block with is their elusive units which we intend to get rid of. Or try to at least. 
And we're going to attack with everything here. I don't mind if I lose units, to be honest with you. And we'll see what happens, actually. Alright, so with it being like this, I can actually give Sharp Sight, or I can use Disintegrate. We'll go for Disintegrate here, and we'll use it on the Flower Child, and we'll commit to this. I could have saved my Health Spider, I suppose, with Sharp Sight. But, I don't think it really matters, since it wouldn't be able to put damage out on the board just yet. And we're going to drop down the Mana Soul student as well, and we'll end the round there. So, this upcoming turn, I'll be able to end the game just off of the Mana Soul student. It's Magic Embers. Death Sand helps too. We'll use Death Sand, and we'll just end like that. If we can. Okay. Well, they nipplify Death Sand, but we still get the Magic Embers going, so we still win. So far, we have Seraphine as her support, if you're just tuning in or just listening. Um, ooh, these are actually some nice battle rewards here. We have the Mana Soul student with Fearsome. Fearsome sucks, but more Mana Soul students, not bad. Uh, we have Guile with Yordle Portal. Since we're using it as often as we are, I think this is actually a good option for us. And I'm going to go with that. Up next, we have the Champion Item Chest. Honestly, there isn't much that we have to worry about here. Uh, we're going to go for the Farsight Alteration on Annie, just to guarantee I get her. And we have 33 health out of 35. There's no point in me going to the Healing Node unless I wanted to cut a card. Right now, I'm actually kind of happy with the cards I have. So, we're going to just go into the shop instead, and let's see what we get. So, we have all these to work with. With everything in mind, the Noxine Merchant's not bad. It would only be a 2 cost. As for everything else, I'm not even considering it. We'll check out the powers next. Emperor's Deus is not something that we need for Annie. And it will just clutter the board. So instead we can look to reroll here. And we have counterfeit production. This is actually kind of interesting for us since we do have Seraphine. We definitely would get a free spell basically. And uh, it'd bring us closer to leveling up Seraphine just by using counterfeit production. So I'm not opposed to it. Anyways, up next we have Gangplank. They have the power, the Saltwater Scourge, which I'm sure everyone's familiar with. Uh, they summon a Powder Keg on round start. And when they start the round with 15 or less health, they create the Dreadway in hand. The Dreadway is a 6 cost unit, I think, that doubles all damage, basically, that our opponents can deal so it's pretty crazy for gang playing that. But we'll see. We're actually going to keep this hand. This is pretty good for us overall. The one thing I've noticed is that um, we haven't got, gotten too lucky by getting... Or, meh. Our opponent had the attack token the entire time so far. Which isn't great for us. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. It would be a lot better for us if we started with the attack token, but it's okay. Um, to start things off, I'm going to use counterfeit. And I'm going to copy Annie. This is going to give me more disintegrates. And I'm going to use Guile, and I'm going to stun the Jagged Butcher. Before they do anything else. And I'm going to use this. This is from the Yordle Portal, of course. Um, I can use this to pick the Legion Grenadier. I think that's my best option here. Okay, they're dropping down, line them up. And knock them down. Of course, all these spells are free. So, that's kind of an issue, huh? Uh, they have a quick warning shot, too. Which I actually can't deal with, to be honest. Uh, but we're gonna... That does three to anything. I can't just drop down any here. I see. I can sacrifice a spell slinger here. And I'll take out their jagged butcher. Venom sure does. Uh 
Okay, so there we go. We took out the keg. And we're also going to lose our unit as well. Fang's turn. The spell tilt the skill still takes effect. And they use knock them down in that way, so I can actually do whatever now. We're gonna drop down Annie first. Before we continue. So now a couple of our cards have epic items, thanks to Guardian's Orb. We're gonna drop down the Legion Saboteur. Now I still have to be careful. Yeah, because they can still attack here. Um we're just gonna eat the five damage to be honest. It's kinda risky doing this. But it's okay, I think. And we're gonna drop down Seraphine here too. And the Legion Grenadier. And we're gonna give inspired plans to Seraphine. And that's going to utilize her quick attack that she already has. And we're going to end the round there. So we have 27 cards left. So they're 26. Yeah, that's roughly the same. Yeah. Basically they're one card different. Between us. Uh, we're going to drop down Annie again. Alright. Cool. So... We can now use drum solo if we wish to. I think that's a good idea. Awesome. So we actually have a free captive gray back here. This is good for us, especially because it's our attack turn. Ooh, they do capture Seraphine though. That's troublesome. We're going to use Guile on it here. Uh, instead of using Guile, what I should have done was, uh, Death Sand. That's okay. We're gonna use counterfeit copies. We're gonna copy Death Sand here. And we're gonna use it... I, I mean, I wish I could stop this, you know. But, um... Yeah, I kinda messed up there. Just a bit. We're going to wait before we use Rumage, actually. And we're... I guess I'm just gonna have to let this go through. Alright, well, we're going to attack with Annie first, utilize our scout. They decided not to block, which is kind of interesting. And we're going to drop inspired plans on our Leaf and Septor. It's kind of silly to do that because they already have quick attack, but I need I needed her to have three damage. And we're going to attack again with all of our units here. And we're going to commit to this. They only have three units to block with. We have a lot of spells and skill effects going on here too. Oh, Annie actually levels up. It's actually pretty hard to level up Annie once she has Gale Force on her. But it's, it is still possible. Yeah, we win regardless actually. I don't have to worry about anything here. That's good. Yeah, sometimes having Overwhelm just makes the difference, really. Alright, we have battle rewards here. Uh, we have to choose an item for our champion, and we get extra copy, an extra copy of that champion, so only one. Um, we can go for quick attack on Seraphine, although the what, equipment that she comes with, or came with, actually has quick attack for me to give her. Alternatively, we can actually use Targon's Brace, and I guess in a sense she'd be closer to the Seraphine on League of Legends. Yeah, I think I'll go for that, or we can go for Giant's Belt on Annie. I'm leaning more towards Giant Spell the more I think about it. Uh, having more health for Annie is definitely great for us. Um, she's pretty easy to destroy as long as they have like 5 health or a way to buff their health. So there's that. Um, before we pick here, I actually need to track something. I need to see how much damage Seraphine has. Alright, so if we drop down Seraphine, we would be able to use Triparian Might. 
If we don't, we can't. As far as I'm aware, I think Fixer Upper or Reset would be the better options here. Um, reset would give us Rally, and since we already have Scout through Annie, I think things would be a little bit better. And if we are able to draw Chrono Break, it would mean we would be able to play safer as well. And it's only a one cost, and we re refill our spell mana every turn. Alright, so here, we are going to go up against a Swole Squirrel. And you see, it has the same power as normal. All units, including ours, will be doubling its power whenever it strikes. So... If you ever play Kane against a Swole Squirrel, it's so much fun. Because he has so many ways of utilizing Strike. And um, he has a lot of spells for it in his deck as well. Which is fantastic. Uh, we're going to take out a couple of the spells from our hand. Once again, they have the attack token to start with. Um, we can actually drop down Acorn here. We actually have an elusive unit. <gasps> Crazy, I know. Um, we're gonna guile this scaled snapper. I'm not gonna deal with it. I don't have it in me. Hmm, we can actually go for survival skills here as well. And it counts as a new spell towards Seraphine. And we're going to also use Death's Hand on the Young Witch. But before we do that, we're going to use Counterfeit Copies on it. I actually like Death's Hand a lot as a spell for any stack. And with it being a one cost, it's... So here we go. Whoa, we got Legion Saboteur off that. That's fantastic. Really good for us. Uh, we do have survival skills if we needed it. But we won't. Um, I'm going to drop down Seraphine here. Although, yeah, I should drop down Annie. But, I think if they went for the attack, I'd be kind of concerned. We are going to use pick a card here, and we are going to put survival skills back into our deck. This brings Seraphine even closer to leveling up, and if I wanted to, I could probably get her to level up next turn. Next turn guaranteed, basically. That's what I'm thinking. We'll see definitely see um if their equip weapon counts then yes we will if not then no uh, we drop down annie here of course and we actually have the attack token so we could play things slow we're going to use inspired plans on seraphine of course and this actually would guarantee our level up for that did not count as a new spell by the way and we are going to use Guile on a couple other units here. We are going to pick Equinox and go for the Silence, of course. And I guess on this one... Hmm, we can go for Legion Drummer. She'd be a free unit. Oh, that's neat. I actually got both of them out of that. That's good. And we'll drop down the Legion Drummer. They don't have anything that they can do, of course. We're going to use Equinox. We are going to silence the Green Glade Lookout. Not like it matters, to be honest with you. But that's just to get Seraphine rolling. We're going to use Counterfeit Copies. No, we're not. We don't need to. We're going to use Guile once again. And we are going to stun the Fuzzy Caretaker. Since it has the most damage. Up next... We are going to go for Moon Silver. And we're going to go for Sigil of Malice. Having more spells again is just going to help us in the long run. We're going to use Moon Silver on Sigil of Malice. And that's going to level up Seraphine. Okay. So we're now going to use Sigil of Malice. Actually, we're going to wait before we use it. We're going to use Disintegrate here on the Scout Snapper. So now whenever we play spells that cost two or less, we copy it with the same targets if it's a new spell. Which is great, because now I can use Sigil Malice on it, and it'll be taken out and dealt with. 
And since it's doubled up, that also helps us level up Annie as well. And this is still our attacker, and we still have full mana, and we have yet to attack. So things are going pretty well for us. Uh, we'll use kind of fair copies now to copy Tibber. And we're going to look to attack with Annie specifically right now. Utilize that scout. And as you can see, for the most part, they don't have anything that they can do against us. Like, I'm just going to use Disintegrate here on the Green Glade Lookout. And I'm going to attack with everyone. I think I should have the quick attack. Hmm. I guess having the quick attack on Annie's fine. Yeah, from the Legion Drummer. That's okay. We're going to commit to this attack and we'll see how this goes. So pretty much no matter what, they weren't able to do anything here. We're just going to use this spell to use it, basically. And knock him down is going to be even stronger, thanks to Annie. It's more so thanks to her star powers. Pyromania 2, where things get increased damage on spells and effects, I think. Spells and skills. Okay. So, we're going to go for Phage on the Inspired Plans here. We could go for Challenger and Lord Broadmain, but we actually haven't used them yet. We haven't needed to since we actually get the job done without them. Um, the Boom Crew Rookie is a free unit that we can utilize here, but I think the Inspired Plans just gives us more leeway with the units that we do have. We could go for Poros. However, I think the item chest would be more beneficial to us. We could go for Predict on Guile. And I think that's our best option between the three, as I previously mentioned. And we have the shop here. We can go for Caitlyn. Grasp of the Undying is actually pretty cool, too. Some of these are actually, like... For the most part, I can utilize all of these in a different way. Uh, in my sights, I don't need, though. So, we can go for Caitlyn, although our deck isn't built around it. And it could, you know, slow down our champion draws. Uh, we get Annie regardless, and we get Caitlyn regardless, thanks to Farsight. So, hopefully Heroes Walk will give us Seraphine. On paper. But that's if we want to spend the gold for it. We have... Basically, one encounter left, and then we have a, whatever rewards are after that, and then we have healing, and then Lulu. So, that's something to think about, and we're going to evade the Green Glade Caretaker. So, we already know that, since we already know that. Um, maybe Caitlyn's not bad. I definitely want this Grasp of the Undying, though. Since it'll be doubled up with Seraphine, it'll be really good for us once we get her leveled up. And we're going to go for two of those since it's pretty cheap after you buy the first copy. Um, we could go for Mini Morph here, although it is a four cost spell. And, you know, these mini manatees might actually be a buff to the enemies. So, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> um, we'll go for this Caitlyn though as well. Having one copy of her is fine. Having two copies of her is alright too. Now, I wouldn't always suggest to pollute your deck with, you know, champions, but... It, it gives me some more leeway and lets me have more fun with things, so... I'm I'm doing it anyways. I'm doing it so you guys don't have to. Maybe. We'll see. Anyways, we're going to go up against the Riptide Rex next. They have the power, Raining Fire, which is their normal power. On the round start, they deal two to any random unit. All right, and we are going to replace the Prefect, and we're going to keep the rest of our hand. I think this is okay for us. I could have replaced Annie. I keep forgetting about Farsight. 
That sucks. Hmm. Okay. Um, we're gonna drop down Annie first. They have a lot of units going on here. We're going to use counterfeit copies. We are going to copy our Caitlyn. We're going to use Guile on one of their scouts. And we're going to commit to this. This is going to let us predict. And it also has Yurtle Portal on it. Which is great for us. We're going to go for Death's Hand. As it's only a one cost. And we can go for Noxian forever. Forever. But... Uh, I would much rather go for Mimic. I think Mimic's gonna do us more more justice here. Um We're gonna block the Solari Soldier with Annie. She goes back into our hand anyway since you know she has Gale Force. And we're gonna drop down Caitlyn here. We're gonna drop down Guile once again. And we are going to stun another one of their units. And we're going to go for another Death's Hand. And this time, we might go for Weapons of the Lost here. I think that's actually alright for us. Although Vision's pretty good. I mean, it's only a one cost spell that we could discard as well. We're going to go for Weapons of the Lost. It'll take us a while to use it if we decide to, but. I think it'll be fun. And we're going to drop down the Spell Slinger, and we're going to use its effect to take out the Island Navigator. Which is going to deal exactly the amount of health it has. And they do have the attack token. So we have to be careful of it. And we're just going to end the round there. We don't have the attack token just yet. So that's something to keep in mind. If I wanted to use Mimic, I wouldn't be able to use it correctly. We are going to drop down Annie first, and that's going to give epic items to more cards. We got fleeting... Oh. Well, we got spirit stone on Annie out of that. So things are already looking up for us. Um, We're going to use counterfeit copies. We're going to copy Death Sand. We're now going to use Mimic. And we are going to Mimic Death Sand. We're now going to use Annie's Disintegrate. We're going to use it on two of their units here. Doesn't really matter which at this point. But before we do that, we actually have to load this correctly. We're going to drop Death Sand on those two. And I guess at this point, we don't actually need to use Disintegrate on the others. Yeah, we'll just use on the Otterpus. And we'll commit to this. We do have the attack token here. Um, if they play another unit, you know, we do have Guile. I don't mind any taking a little bit more damage here. That's okay for us. Uh, we're going to immediately attack with Annie. She now has bonded bucklers. But she, she could share scout. But it doesn't work the way you think it does. I've tried it before. Um, if you share scout, yeah, the unit would get scout that round. But it doesn't count towards scout since it didn't originally have scout which is kind of goofy but that seems to be the way it is um we'll use annie to buff up galen i don't think it matters to be honest but maybe yeah, we can try it extra damage that's about it we weren't able to level up annie off this which is okay In some sense, having Gale Force on Annie actually makes her a little bit more safe. Going up against the Riptide Rex, since she'll never be the victim of raining fire. That's something to keep in mind. Alright, they're doing a bunch of stuff. That doesn't seem to really, really matter, truly. <laughs> and, well... We have to just let this go through. They have jailbreak going on. The fallen feline. We'll drop down our Annie. 
as you can see, she has a ton of things going on. And we have Reckoner's Mark on her too, which I don't like, <laughs> personally. But, hey, we got it from our Guardian's Orb. Um, well, to start things off, we can do a couple things here. We're going to use counterfeit copies. We are going to copy weapons of the Lost. This is a burst spell, so I don't know why this is acting like this. Strange. That broke the game. Hmm. Well, this is fun. Well, you gotta love Rune Terrace. Okay, there we go. Cool. Well, we eventually solved that. Um, and we'll drop down Lord Broadman. And we'll deal four to the Petty Officer. That really distracted me. Uh, we're gonna let Jailbreak go through. And we'll use Guile on their Forge Chief. They do have the attack token though, I have to remember that. I kind of forgot about it. We're gonna pick Inspired Plans there. And we are also going to go for the incisive tactic. No, we're not. That's going to be a six cost. We're going to go for another Lord Broadmain then. I don't think they should attack. I mean, if they do, it's not going to work too well for them. So we're going to end the round there. And he goes back into our hand. And we lose the fleeting copy of her that we got from Spirit Stone. So I'm going to continue to drop down Annie, although she does have Reckoner's Mark. It's kind of spooky, in a sense. I think we'll be okay. And we'll use Inspired Plants here. We're going to use it on Lord Broadmain. And that's just going to give him more stats and quick attack, which will be great. It is our attack turn, after all. And we can also drop down Weapons of the Lost. Yeah, I think we'll do that. And we'll just take out the Petty Officer real quick. And this is also going to give us another unit as well. Ooh, okay. Alright, well. I wasn't expecting that. Unfortunately for us, we weren't able to utilize Caitlyn's rally since we didn't attack. Mm. Okay. Okay. We're going to commit and utilize her scalp before it's too late. And now we're going to attack with both. And it'll be for 12 damage unless they block with the Star Shepherd. Okay. Well. Nah, I can't use Vile Feast the way I want to. That sucks. I'm going to have to just use Vile Feast on it. Unfortunately, Lord Broadmain doesn't have Overwhelm. And that unit would have been defeated either way. But Vile Feast was fleeting. If I didn't use it, I'd lose it. So, didn't really have any options there. Besides that. And we lose our Lord Broadmain too. We'll finish things out, though, on this round, so we'll be okay. We'll drop down Annie here. We'll get the Fleeting Stone and the Reckoner's Mark. And we can use Inspired Plans on our Spiderling. 
We have to see if they'll drop down another card. So I'm just going to keep playing units and see what happens. Okay, they're not budging. They have s s seven mana in total, one spell mana, and they're not playing any cards. It's kind of suspicious. We're going to use counterfeit copies on Death Sand then. And we're going to pass. Ooh, that's actually really cool. Chrono Break with double Summoner Stone. I like that a lot. We're gonna drop Annie down first, though. This is gonna be fun. I'm excited now. All right, we're gonna use Annie to attack immediately. I'm not gonna let them do that to me again. <laughs> I learned my lesson. And of course, they they just let us win. Which isn't what I wanted. <laughs> I wanted to get the uh, the extra champions. And drop down scout and then, you know, attack a few times. That would have been a lot more fun. Oh well. That happens. Alright. Uh, Legion Saboteur with Crystal Carry is really good. But... I don't think we can actually... Give me a second. Oh no, we'll be able to utilize it. Never mind. Um, we can also go for Blade's Edge with Summoning Beacon as well. Both of these are fine. Crack Shark Corsair is good too. These are all good battle rewards for any realistically. I can get away with any of them. Um, we'll go for Blade's Edge maybe. That gives us more units to play around with. More board control. And we're going to go for Jin here. Um, that was kind of lucky that we got him in the shop. Yeah, we'll go for Jin. And we're going to go for two copies of him. He has Giant's Belt, that, that's whatever. But, hey, I mean, we have Jin, we have Caitlyn, we have Seraphine, and we have Annie all in the same deck in Path of Champions, so... What could go wrong? I'm sure a lot of things can, but we'll see. I mean, polluting the deck with Champions isn't always a good thing. We didn't get Seraphine last match for example due to it um anyways up next we have lulu she has her normal power our strongest follower becomes a squirrel with one 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 power one health and it's silenced this round this is usually pretty problematic to deal with whenever you don't have that many units to play if you rely on strong, one str like if you rely on like one strong unit to do most of your damage, it doesn't go too well for you. Like Alawi, Alawi kind of gets messed up by Lulu's Adorbos. Oh, this is actually a pretty good hand for us. We drew everything except Seraphine <laughs> immediately. Uh, we'll drop down Annie first, and hey, we also got the attack token. Crazy. We're just going to attack with her immediately. Utilize the scout first. Before we play down more cards. This is good. We take out the only card that they've dropped down so far. Oh, they can also play Lulu level 1, so... Very happy that we got the attack token first. Um, to start things off... We'll drop down the house spider. We'll use Guile. Isle is free. We will... Oh, these are actually really good options. Um, we'll go for Chrono Break. And we will go for Strategic Execution. Yes. Okay, they notify that. Does that matter? I guess it does. <laughs> okay. Well... We are now going to drop down Jin. We're going to use Inspired Plans on Jin. And we have the attack token, so we can go as slow or as fast as we want with this. And we are going to use his Dancing Grenade to take out Trevor. And we are also going to use Death Sand to 
take out the green glade lookout but first we're going to use counterfeit copies on it and now we're going to use it and we're going to use it to take out the green glade lookout i think we made the most out of things by doing things like that although we could have used both of our spells to take out their lulu that would also be an option i was hoping they wouldn't nopify that but that's okay Lucky for us, we're actually also able to utilize the Buru Cultist. Uh, since we did equip Jin, it's going to deal that damage to the Nexus. Anyways, on that note, we're going to attack with everyone here. Um, the only person I have to worry about getting defeated is Annie. She has Gale Force, so just as long as Lulu doesn't block, we'll be okay. I will but we'll see. Nice. Alright, we could use Transfusion here. We'll deal three to Jin, and we are going to give it to our House Fighter. I was going to give it to Annie, but I realized she wouldn't be able to keep it, and I didn't check if it was this round specific or not. So. Okay, so we stun Lulu. And we're able to put some damage off on their Nexus. That's great. One around there. Let's see what happens since we did use Guile. Alright, we lose our Brewer Cultist. And we weren't able to get the spells that we predicted, it seems. With them nopifying Guile, but we'll see. Uh, we're going to drop down Annie first. We could use second bounce here, we could use Guile, we could use counterfeit copies, we have a lot of options here. We're going to use counterfeit copies on second bounce. That's going to give us a strong spell to work with. We're going to use it on Lulu. Is it an encore? And they attack specifically with the caretaker. So we're going to use Annie here to block, and the reason why is she has Gale Force, so she'll just go back into our hand. Without anything to worry about. And I think to make things faster, we're going to drop down to Mana Soul Student. We're going to use Guile. Doesn't really matter on what. And we're going to go for Death Sand. And we'll go for Ravenous Block. That's going to level up Jin, or rather, it should. Yep. Mostly thanks to Magic Embers. And we stunned both of their units. They already attacked though, so that's not the important thing. Uh, we're going to use Ravenous Flock here. And we're going to take out another one of their units. And we're going to drop down Caitlyn. We're going to replace one of our Spiderlings. And now we can end. Pretty sure this is just going to end the game. Or really close. It looks like it's only going to deal three. So. Yeah. Okay. Well. Needless to state. Needless to say. We still cleared the board. We have full Nexus health. They only have one left. And it's now our attack turn. They are only going to get one card from their draw. And we have everything else working for us really. So. We're good to go. Uh, we can just attack immediately with everyone. We can drop down any, play around with them. There's a lot of options here that we can work with. Alright. And there's a Starlight Portal for you. It wasn't too hard. I would suggest using Teemo or Annie just to utilize all the low-cost cards. And utilize low-cost champions. But I think you can get through with just about anyone. The only other thing I would say is maybe don't take Vi through it. Since she kind of does need to stick around in your hand for a little bit longer to make the most out of things. Uh, since she does have scaling power. But besides that, I'm pretty well.